In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how I paint this snowy Christmas tree scene in watercolor. I have four primary objectives in this tutorial. Number one, I want to show you how to create a night or nocturnal scene in watercolor, which can be a little tricky. Number two, I want to show you how to get uh, the look of kind of glowing uh, snow uh, at night because it's a night scene and there's snow and so the snow kind of glows, it looks cool. Number three, I want to show you how to create the effect of snow falling uh, in a dark night sky. And number four, how to paint a classic fir tree. But before we get started with all that, let's talk about the colors we're going to use in this painting. First of all, green gold in the upper left corner. This will be my primary green. I'll be mixing it with blue to darken it. I also am using pyrrole red, which is a warm red. I use that for the Christmas bulbs on the tree. I have quinacridone gold, which I mix in with uh, some of the green gold. I also mix it with the red to warm it up a little bit. Next, I have cobalt blue, which I use for the snow, and indanthrone blue, which is a very dark, warm blue, and I use that primarily for the background. I also use it to mix with the green gold to get a really dark green, which you see there in the lower right corner. All right, now let's get started with the painting. I'm using a number six quill Princeton Neptune brush. It's a very thirsty, big brush. I've got my green gold mixed up. It's pretty much just green gold, uh, very light wash, a tea consistency of paint. And I'm just using the tip of the brush, as you can see here, to just uh, paint in a very light wash of the tree. Also, of course, I've sketched the shape of the tree on the paper. I'm using 140 pound cold press Bahong watercolor paper. And uh, I've got just a really simple sketch of a tree on the paper. Also, it's helpful to know that I am painting this wet on dry. And I also have my paper attached to a board and it's at a slight angle, probably about a 30 degree angle. Now I'm going to take my pyrrole red and I've used, I'm using a smaller brush as you can see here. This is probably an Aqua Elite number 12 round, uh, long round. And I'm just uh, dropping in a little bit of the pyrrole red. Again, this is a warm red. I'm going to speed the process up a bit and you can just see how I finish this off. And right here, I'm going to take a little bit of the quinacridone gold and drop it in there for the trunk of the tree. Now I'm taking my cobalt blue and a very light wash. Uh, I'm, I'm touching the wash of the cobalt blue up against the trunk of the tree. And this is the trick of how I create that glow uh, on the snow is I allow the colors of the green of the tree and the trunk color, that golden color, to blend down into the cobalt blue wash. And that creates the glow that I uh, end up seeing at the end of the painting. All right, now it's time to paint the background. I have mixed up a very dark mixture of my indanthrone blue. I've also just mixed in a little bit of the red, the pyro red in there, and uh, even a little bit of the uh, quin gold. Those three primary colors mixed together create a grayish color, a neutral color. And I'm carefully using my number 12 round uh, brush to paint right around the tree. I'm using the point of the brush to do negative painting around the edge of the tree. I'm just going to speed this process up. You'll see how I just paint the background and I'm creating a silhouette effect. I'm not painting the entire back background. I'm almost done with this first wash, but uh, the last thing I want to do is take a little bit stronger mix of my quinacridone gold and just drop it in there on the trunk um, and just cause that, that tree trunk to glow a little bit. At this point, you want to allow the painting to dry completely. You can see it's dried a little bit lighter in value. Now I've mixed up my green gold and my indanthrone blue, and I've taken my fine tipped uh, sable brush. This is a Princeton Aqua Elite, and I'm just uh, kind of creating the texture of this classic fir tree fir tree has boughs that stick out from the trunk uh, horizontally away from the tree. So I'm mostly uh, creating kind of horizontal shapes, but I'm not covering the entire tree. I'm allowing that real light green gold wash that I did initially to just uh, shine through. 
and I'm using the edge of my brush here to create these vertical uh, patterns along the tree. I'm also wetting the brush after I put some paint down. If I feel that the edge of the paint is a little bit too of a hard line and I want a softer look, I just wet the brush and, uh, and soften the edge of, of the wash I've just put down. I'm also painting around, negatively painting around those red bulbs and uh, so that they stand out from the tree. I'm going to speed the video up a bit because this process takes a while. And uh, after I go through with this medium value green, you'll see I also come back with an even darker green. So I just mix in more indanthrone blue to the mix I already have and come over this wet wash again with this darker value green. And you can see how that darker value just blends out into the wash that's already there. So this is my technique for creating a classic fir tree. I build up the value, starting with a really light wash, then a medium wash, and then a darker wash on top of that. I allow the colors to blend. I'm also careful to emphasize horizontal strokes that represent the horizontal boughs of the tree. Now it's time to take my pyro red, a thicker mixture of it, and paint in the um, red bulbs. Again, I'm not painting the entire shape of the bulb. I want to leave some of that lighter color, which represents the light reflecting on the bulb. I'll speed the video up. As you see, I, I, I do this entire process. Now I'm going to take a step away from the painting and evaluate it. And I see as the paint dries, it's a little bit light overall on the tree, and I want more contrast. So I'm taking an even darker mixture of my indanthrone blue and green gold, and I'm coming back and uh, applying some dark contrast in between the boughs. So as the tree, uh, as you look deeper into the center of the tree, you're going to see darker values in there uh, where there's shadows inside the tree. So I'm going to add those now. Then after that, I'll come back and add even some more uh, red to the bulbs. Okay, at this point, I'm happy with the tree. So I step away and let it dry. And now I want to add the falling snow. The easiest way I have found to do that is to take white gouache and uh, put it on the end of a brush and just flick it onto the paper as you see me doing here. White gouache is a opaque water medium uh, and uh, it is, works great if you want to add small details over your transparent watercolor paint. Here's the specific paint I use. This is Windsor & Newton gouache, white gouache. Okay, the painting's coming along nicely, but now we need to really turn this into a nocturnal scene or a nighttime scene. So we need to darken the background. I'm gonna mix up a really dark mixture of my indanthrone blue, uh, mixing in my other primary colors, red and yellow, a little bit with that too, to neutralize it and get a nice bluish gray, dark, dark colors, very thick paint. I'm probably using a milk to cream consistency of paint. And I like painting my backgrounds in two stages, having a lighter wash first. So then as I paint, I can just let little spots of the, that lighter bluish gray kind of shine through. It gives a set of sense of texture and interest to the background instead of just having it be all one color. Uh, I also have just a just variety of colors I'm mixing in there. I'm, I'm bringing in maybe a little bit more of the uh, Quinn Gold to kind of give it more of a greenish uh, hue in some places and then back to a blue and um, I'm not trying to create detail in the background I'm just a very abstract background so I'm using the side of the brush and just moving quickly quick brush strokes just to get a real uh, rough quick texture to the background as I move closer to the snow I put in more of that Quinn gold to give it more of a greenish hue because there's I'm imagining there's kind of trees in the background or bushes and things like that whereas at the top it's more of a blue because it's looking up into the sky again I've got my brush with a nice uh, nice point to it so I can do negative painting around the edge of the tree I want to uh, give the sense of the boughs kind of uh, the edge of the tree where the boughs are sticking out so I want to uh, paint around those and again, you can see I'm, I'm really leaving some areas of that light blue to shine through. And I think it, it just gives it a nice look. The painting is just about done, but I feel like it needs some more falling snow. So I take my gouache, 
on my nice stiff synthetic brush and I flick that paint onto the background. You can see how it just looks like falling snow here. You wanna be careful when you're doing this that you don't always hold the brush at the same angle or direction. So you'll see here, I also turn the uh, brush at a different angle and, and uh, flick the paint because uh, otherwise you get all of the little dots kind of going in a line in the same direction and it doesn't look right. So you wanna be careful with that as you're putting the gouache. So there you go. There's my snowy Christmas tree scene, a nocturnal scene with falling snow and glowing snow. And uh, here I'm going to add my signature to the finished piece. I'm really happy with this one. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If so, consider subscribing to my channel. I put out new videos every week. And I also have on my website at studio.chrisdebruin.com a growing collection of free resources and premium courses and free courses that you might be interested. You might want to jump over there and take a look. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and keep on growing in watercolor.